No idea. Oh! Oh, don't, don't mind. Don't make me leave like this. Come on, Murph. Don't make me leave like this, Murph. Hey, I love you forever. You hear me? I love you forever, and I'm coming back. I'm coming back. In this episode, we're going to consider the science that creates some of the most emotional scenes in Interstellar. I'm speaking, of course, about time travel. So let's get this out of the way right off the bat here. Time travel is possible. Time dilation was first predicted by Einstein in 1905 when he first published his Special Theory of Relativity, a paper that demonstrated the inexorable link between space and time. Einstein discovered that time is relative depending on where you are. It can run faster for some than for others, and there are two ways this can occur. The first is known as relative velocity time dilation. If one person is moving and the other is standing still, time actually moves slower for the person who is moving. The faster you go, the slower time moves for you. This doesn't affect us in everyday life, however, because the effect is relative to how fast you're moving, and really only becomes significant as you approach the speed of light. The other way to stretch time is by gravitational time dilation. The stronger the gravitational field and the closer you are to it, the slower time will move for you. For example, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 are currently traveling in interstellar space and are well outside the gravitational field of any star or planet. As a result, time is moving slower for us here on Earth than it is for these two probes. The Hafeel Keating experiment is perhaps the most iconic test of the effects of time dilation. In 1971, three hyper-accurate cesium atomic clocks were built. One was left on the ground, and the other two were put on planes and flown around the Earth twice over. When all three clocks were reunited, it was found that every clock showed a minutely different time, thanks to the combined effects of both relative velocity and gravitational time dilation. So while time travel exists, just how far can you stretch time? In Interstellar, an hour on Miller's planet is equivalent to seven years on Earth. In order for this to make any sense, Kip Thorne deduced that Miller's planet would need to orbit Gargantua at the lowest stable orbit possible so that the gravitational time dilation could be maximized without the planet actually being sucked into the black hole. When Cooper falls into Gargantua near the end of the film, the gravity and hence the time dilation increases exponentially as he crosses the event horizon. These effects are possible just because of how large Gargantua really is. Its diameter is larger than the Earth's orbit, and its mass is 100 million times that of our own Sun. But Kip Thorne found that even with its immense size, the gravity from such a large black hole would still not be enough to produce the amount of time dilation seen in Interstellar. However, he found that it would be possible if the effects of gravitational and relative velocity time dilation worked together. This can occur, but only if Gargantua is spinning so quickly that the objects nearing the event horizon travel close to the speed of light. This amount of spin on a black hole is incredibly unlikely and has certainly never been seen in our own universe, but is still technically bound by the laws of physics and is therefore possible. In the end, it turns out that the time dilation seen in Interstellar is improbable but scientifically admissible. So, time dilation in Interstellar. Science or science fiction? Nobody believed me, but I knew you'd come back. How? Because my dad promised me. 